Hello, my name is Amber Smith. I'm a blogger at 200fingersandtoes.com. I also work at In Due Season Homeschool, where we created courses to help homeschoolers fine tune their roadmap to their best homeschool. Um, I'm also a homeschool mom to 10 fantastic kids, and I've learned a lot along the way. Today, I want to talk to you about the number one gift that homeschooling has to offer you as a family and as parents. Now, the number one thing that you can build, grow, and sustain while you're homeschooling is the relationship you have with your child. Now, why does this seem obvious, yet sometimes gets overlooked in your planning? Well, because there are so many academic needs that are right in front of your face every minute. As you begin planning your homeschool year, you're going to look at the requirements by your state and the requirements for graduation that is expected of your child to obtain that goal of a graduation one day. But in the meantime, as you're looking at the academic needs, oftentimes what gets overlooked is the relationship with our child easily because it's not measurable. We can measure their progress academically. We can take a math test at the beginning of the school year, and by the end of the school year, we can see progress. Because there's not a test for our relationships, sometimes we don't notice the decline or the progress that we have made. So how can we make relationships a priority in our homeschool every day? That's the question that we're gonna talk about in this session. So one of the ways that I have helped to make relationships as a priority is to sit down at the beginning of the school year and include my child in their school planning. Now that uh, seems like an easy task to do, but just recently I went to a homeschool conference and I pulled aside several teens out of the groups that passed me by. And each one I asked, how do you influence your homeschool decisions at the high school level? And many of those kids had zero input in their homeschool. It's one thing to be at elementary and kindergarten level, but by high school, our kids should have a voice in what they're studying and their interests. But it's so easy as parents to see this huge load of demands and not be able to step back and ask our child about their interests and what they want to pursue. So one of the things that I have helped create a um, room for relationships in our homeschool is by incorporating my child's interests and maybe the things that they want to study in our homeschool studies. And we can do that as early as the elementary age. And so incorporating your child at the beginning of the school year and sitting down to talk about what they would like to learn and grow in during the school year is a great way to just connect as parents hear our children's heart, um, and also get to know them a little bit better. This is a great way to pull your child into the schooling year. If they know that they have something that they will enjoy promised within the school day, they're going to be much more likely to want to join all of our events and all of our activities because they know there's a few things that they are going to look forward to. Yes, we have to do math and yes, we get to do science and sometimes we have to dissect sentences, but there can be that dessert thrown throughout the school day that helps your child be engaged and activated in their learning. So that is one of the ways we connect. Um, I also am going to share uh, a few of the um, homeschool accountability pages that I've created in my course, 30 Days to the Homeschool Reset. Um, but that came out of creating some worksheets for parents to use to just ask questions and write down your answers so that you could follow up at the end of the school year. So as a member of this group and as part of watching this session with me um, is I'm going to share these two pages as a freebie for you. And so one of the tools that will help you at the beginning of the school year connect as a parent with your child um, and maybe make a plan for some things we want to work on is a page that is just titled my skill inventory worksheet. 
So how do we connect with our children during the year? Well, one of the ways we can do that is sitting down with a sheet like this. It's as simple as a piece of paper. And you can talk about the current skills that they've mastered. This is a great way to praise your child. Maybe there was an area last year they were really struggling in and they've worked really hard and have advanced to a place where um, they're ready to move on to the next level. Before we move on to the next level, Let's spend some time celebrating that accomplishment. It's so easy just to keep moving to the next thing, and we don't realize how valuable it is to tell our kid they've done a great job, especially if it was an area where they were behind and now they're caught up. That's a huge milestone, and it should be celebrated. And I encourage you, as you sit down, it just gives you the reminder to be intentional about celebrating those wins. As a parent, one of my goals in our homeschool is to create wins at every occasion I can because a lot of our work throughout the day is hard. Um, a lot of our goals take all year to accomplish. And so if we can celebrate the small wins along the way, it goes a great way into helping your kids feel like they're on the same team with you, accomplishing goals and celebrating them along the way. So the first thing we're going to look at is the skills that they have already mastered. Then you're going to ask your child, what are some skills you want to improve? Now, those might be skills that you want them to improve as well. But when they come up with it first, that means that they're making it their own priority, which means they're going to have a lot more ownership in trying to develop and grow that skill. And so this is a place where also you might be surprised by your child. You might find areas that you didn't think they were lacking that they feel like they are. Again, that's how we build relationship is opening these conversations with our child and hearing their heart, um, maybe for the first time about their academics or their personal goals. Um, and I make this a regular habit uh, throughout our school year. So at the beginning of the school year, we do this. And then about mid-year, we sit down and check and see how we're doing. So this is a place for your child to ask about the skills that they want to improve on. Uh, the next one is skills we'd like to acquire. Um, so yes, we want to improve on some skills, but maybe there's something totally new that they would like to add on this school year. Maybe it's an outside of academic skill, maybe archery or a, a sport or some sort of um, craft is, is something that they want to work on. Uh, and that's a place where we can make their interests Creditable. There are plenty of elective classes through the junior high and high school years. And so if your child has an interest, find a way to give them school credit for learning that. Um, you can look up the simple, um, if you go to your local high school, you can pull their high school handbook and it will have a description of all of their elective classes. If you read through those, that will give you a great idea of things that you can give your child school credit for learning on their own or with you or taking a class or learning together in a small group. And so sometimes just talking about what do they want to learn this coming year. Um, sometimes that takes a little pushing with us as a parent to help our child see areas where maybe they have a skill that you think they could hone. And so this is a great place to talk about what you see as their potential. Another way to tie our relationships together as well and encourage our child in their giftings that they already have or giftings that maybe you see that they haven't yet identified. And so school is a great place to try on different activities that help your child discover their giftings and hone places that they're already talented. So that's where I'm talking about. Academics is a huge part of our homeschool year, but there are places that we can really connect with our specific child within the broad scope of the homeschool year. So as we add our big overreaching academic goals, this is a place to fine tune um, that one on one time with your specific student and connect with them on their giftings and talents. Another spot is going to be input from others. So this is a great place for your child to take this sheet of paper and ask five other people, what they see as talents um, from 
an outside perspective. This is also a great encouragement to your child for other people to tell them what they think they're good at. It might be something they're already naturally gifted, but sometimes people can see something in your child that you've overlooked because you're so close. And so I use this page to ask from some outside sources what they see as your child's talent as well. Uh, on the bottom of this page that you'll get, it has, we will meet again at, and it has a specific time and place that you're going to meet again and talk about these goals. So these goals can be academic, but these can also be um, outside of school related subjects. These are places that your child wants to grow and you want to help them do so. Um, again, these are excuses for us to have some relationship time together. And so help your child lead the conversation, but also don't put down something that you maybe aren't interested in. I know my sons grew up as gamers and I was not a real advocate of online games. I wasn't very interested and for a period of time, I even discouraged them from being online or playing games. Um, but I have come to understand that that is one of the ways that they communicate with their friends online. It's basically boy phone calls. But there are also a lot of skills that they have used. And my son is currently on the electronic sports team at his college. And there's a paid scholarship available for kids who play games and are really good at it. So what I thought was a useless activity has actually turned into dollars for college. So don't discount a subject that your child's interested in just because maybe you're not familiar or you don't see the value. Help them show you what they find valuable about it. And this would be a great place to start making connections. One of the terms we use is tying heartstrings. And when we're working with our kids, we're constantly looking for ways to connect with them in their world and on their terms. And so uh, some of the things that they're interested in are going to be opportunities for us to connect. Sometimes if we see a gifting or a talent that our child has, that's going to be an opportunity for us to help draw them into a better place and help them grow. So it can be mutually beneficial to both of us to have this back and forth where we encourage and they teach us. I've learned a ton from my kids. As I've raised the 10 and we've graduated four, um, I tell you, they have poured into me as much as I have poured into them over the 12 years of homeschooling. But that means having a willing heart to hear and listen about their interests as well. So I have another spot um, that I offer in our freebies for this session. This page is called our Relationship Goal Worksheet. Uh, relationships are a huge part of our homeschool, and dealing with different personalities is not easy. Even though it's your child, it doesn't always mean that we're going to go through the school year without having to resolve conflict, without having to work with different kinds of personalities and find how we can deal with each individual child, sometimes in vastly different ways. So what we do when we have our one-on-one -on -one meetings at the beginning of the year, or sometimes we've even scheduled those a little more often, especially when the children were younger and we were working on maybe um, some specific character traits that I wanted to see developed in them, then we set these meetings a little closer together so that we could really be intentional about following up. Again, we're building great relationships, and sometimes that means helping your child develop some skills so that they can work on their people's skills and have successful relationships as well. So this is called the Relationship Goal Worksheet, and you will have it in your freebies. Uh, again, you could just take a piece of paper and write these four goals down and have a conversation. Uh, so the first one is going to be a character evaluation and observation. Sometimes I've used this sheet if we just have a character trait that I see is developing and it's something not everybody in the house is enjoying. 
And so maybe we have somebody who's a tattletale and they just um, continually are telling on other children. And we really want to develop a better skill on a better way of problem solving than just going and running to the parent and telling all the time. Uh, at our house, we actually made a rule for a period of time. You could imagine with 10 kids, 12 and under, uh, there was so much tattling at one point in time that I made a rule that if it was worth telling me about, then both children had to sit on their bed for 20 minutes. And uh, it wasn't to punish the child who was telling, it was just to reduce the traffic that was coming to me. And so you can be creative in how you solve problems in your family. Um, and sometimes it's just identifying that character trait that maybe just needs refined or needs redirected. And so we're going to just use this relationship goal worksheet to have a character evaluation and observation. Let's sit down and say, hey, how about we work on character? What are some traits that you see that you would like to work on or develop? And then I'll give some input. Here's a few things that I want to see you work on. Again, this is a sheet we're going to come back to. So pick a top two items. Uh, we're not going to overwhelm our child with all the things that we think they should work on, but we're just setting some goals for either a semester or for half of the school year, or if it's something big, maybe for the whole school year. This is especially important if you're transitioning your child out of public school into homeschooling for the first time. Um, there are going to see some things that you maybe haven't seen expressly because your child hasn't been working with you one-on-one -on -one every day. And so instead of being overwhelmed and correcting every single character trait that you see needs worked on, make yourself a list of your own and then prioritize those. And then we're going to come to this meeting with your top two things that you really want your child to work on with you. And so as you do that, then we're going to look at the character evaluation that we want to work on. We're going to look at the second box, which says underlying root causes. So sometimes it's just not knowing where to go um, with the tattling problem. Sometimes it was just not having the skill set of understanding what is a situation where you need to come and get a parent and what is a situation that can be resolved with decision making or the time to walk away. And so we went through how to make those choices and how to respond in situations that need a parent. So again, the underlying root cause was not knowing what situations to go get a parent for. And as we discussed that, that reduced the people that came to me to interact with a child for something that was simply could be resolved by walking away or sharing or kindness. Um, so again, not to oversimplify because there are some character traits that maybe are something that's really causing harm in your family or causing harm in your child's relationships. And so um, jealousy, uh, anger, uh, those are things that we need to sit down and say, okay, let's get to the underlying root cause. Um, sometimes that means taking a few weeks to observe and saying, okay, when you're overwhelmed, what is happening? Or when you have an angry outburst with your siblings, what is going on and looking at the root cause? Um, sometimes it's as simple as that child maybe feels left out. Maybe that child feels inferior to another brother or sister. And so now we know that we need to build up their character so that they feel loved, accepted, and valued um, in a unique way of their own. And so again, looking at that underlying root cause is something we're both going to work at together, but we can kind of see what kind of situations are leading to this character problem. And that gives us an idea of how we can work to resolve that as a team. Uh, we're also going to look at an academic evaluation and observations. So one of the areas in our relationships is looking at, okay, maybe your child is at a deficit academically. And so there's maybe some reading remediation that needs to happen. So this is a place where we can make some goals. Um, oftentimes I see maybe a child is frustrated with a subject. But when we sit back and look, it's actually just a few skills that they're missing. And so um, if we can look at what is the actual academic problem, then we're going to look at the skills needed for success. Um, this happens a lot as older kids transition to middle school. I've helped a lot of homeschool parents who are moving to that grade and suddenly a child who was doing great in elementary math is having extreme trouble with um, their high school level math or that middle school math. Uh, oftentimes, as we've 
dug deeper and looked at what the real problem was. It was like simple division problems as they got bigger into long division. And as we picked it apart further, it was actually just a simple lack of mastery of the multiplication tables. And so as they added those six, sevens, and eights, all of our worst enemies, um, as they added those and really intentionally studied those, came back to the division problems, and now they had complete mastery of that. And so again, as we write down an academic evaluation, an area that your child needs to work, now we can look at those skills that they need, and now we have something we can work on. Yes, your child can say they're bad at math, but as we break it down and look at specifically where the problem is, now we can look at what skill they need to work on that. And then you can incorporate maybe a tool, maybe a game, or something as simple as Khan University or something um, online that just can give them a few tests in the specific area that they need. There are tons of academic tools out there to help you. But again, if we lose sight of our relationships in our homeschool life, then we're missing the greatest gift that homeschooling has to offer you. And that's a strong relationship with your child after school is done. It can be accomplished. And I want to encourage you as a homeschool mother of 10, as a mother right now of seven teenagers, you can build great relationships with your child while homeschooling. Yes, while being the task person, being the chore giver, and being the assigner of all things homework, you can still have a great relationship with your child. But it takes making that a priority as you do your school year. Um, that's why at the bottom of each one of these pages, you will see my goal for and their name is to what you want to accomplish. And then it says, we will meet again in how many weeks to check on our progress. If your child knows that you won't follow up, then this is not worth it. And so those goals will be forgotten. And also they will see that you do not value making those changes. So as we sit down and have those meetings, be intentional about setting a follow-up goal and then put a reminder on your calendar, put a reminder in your phone. And when it says, check back at your relationship goal worksheet, you'll know right where to go. And then you and your child can check in and see the progress you've made. Again, this gives you a moment to celebrate your wins. Keep these sheets in the front of your homeschool binder so that you know what your goals are at the beginning of every week. If you keep those at the forefront of your mind, then you will make progress this school year. And I promise you will have some wins to celebrate. Now, if you're looking for more homeschool support, uh, maybe you would like more accountability. Um, that's where I will encourage you. You can check out the tools that I've created at indueseason.net. And there is the 30 Days to Homeschool Reset course, which will have all of these accountability sheets that help you get your homeschool back on track. So if you're looking for a short term, maybe crash course before the school year starts, or if you feel like, you know what, we just need to get our house back in order. Um, these accountability worksheets talk about household chores, schooling, uh, relationships, and just getting everything back into accountability with worksheets that everybody can come back and discuss. Now, if you're looking for a longer term homeschool support, or if you're just beginning and you think, I don't even know where to start, uh, then our 30 days, I'm sorry, your homeschool reset course is going to be a shorter term. The six keys to your best homeschool year is going to be the course that is going to help you set the foundation to the best homeschool year from beginning to graduation. Now that course is going to walk through all of the steps to help you build your own homeschool roadmap so that you at the end of this course know exactly the tools you need to meet the goals that you've set along the way. So I am here to help you. I'm a homeschool coach and a homeschool advocate and I would love to connect with you either at induseason.net or on my personal blog 200fingersandtoes.com. I encourage you to catch as many of these workshops as you can because even as a homeschooler for the last 18 years, I learn so much 
every time I listen to anybody else's sessions. So I encourage you as you're growing and learning, um, keep stepping forward and congratulations for investing in yourself and growing in your homeschool skills this year. I can't wait to see how you progress as you use these items. Have a great day. Thanks.